everyone. Welcome back to Eternal Midnight. I am Santino here with Chad. What's going on, man? Oh, I just swung in to say what's up. <laughs> and speaking of swinging, so from, <laughs> from the fast cars to the cannibalistic psychopaths, we are now swinging in back from back to the superhero genre with the probably one of the most iconic superheroes of all time the web slinger the web slinging wall crawler spider-man so we're going to be covering all spider-man films from the raimi movies to the gar to the garfield movies to the mcu even though we already covered it in a previous video and right down to spider-verse and venom so let's start with the very first live action interpretation of the wall crawler spider-man so what do you think of spider-man chad what the japanese one <laughs> no the spider-man <laughs> sam raimi version <laughs> oh right right there was a japanese version like that's I, right we I, should have talked about that except i've never seen it um. never seen it, so. <laughs> okay so the first I know there's a lot of Sam Raimi fanboys out there. We both know it. We've encountered them. We've seen yeah. them. We've spoken with them. This is, I'd say, out of that trilogy, the only one that I truly think is a great film. Like, I genuinely really love this movie. Like, it's, it's got some dated stuff in it from, you know, the early 2000s or whatever. But overall, I still say this is an extremely epic and just a great origin film for spider-man i really love it too. i think spider-man the original i think this book this came out what 2002 2002 yeah spider-man 2002 is one of the most like it's one of the like iconic staples of that you know that super genre because like it's it's straight up a comic book movie like where like you know the, the, the panels come to life and that's that early like it's a, it's a, or, yeah, it's cheesy for sure, but you know, it's like, like remember this is a time it's fun. Where, remember, it's fun. Remember this is a time where like, um, you had stuff like Ghost Rider and Daredevil and Electra coming out, Electra coming out. Where studios thought that and oh, X Men comic books had to be dark and gritty, but they're all, where they're all wearing like leather suits and like having leather outfits and crying in the rain and being oh we're so sad or we're superheroes. And this is the first one where it's like, no, you know, superheroes can be fun. Like you have this dorky kid who's like, not like Wolverine or Blade, who's like this guy who's gonna become a superhero. And let's talk about him. Like, you know, Tobey Maguire. What do you think of Tobey, Tobey Maguire as Peter Parker first and then Spider-Man later? Uh, he's probably my least favorite of both. Damn. You know what, I'll, I'll be honest I with you, me also. I still, I still like him. I mean, the suit's iconic looking, but I don't... Here's my biggest problem. We were still in that era of high schoolers being played by full-on adults. Right. Like, look at the MCU. Yes, I can buy Tom Holland as a high schooler. I can buy even Andrew Garfield as a high schooler. I can't buy these people as high schoolers at all. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like like you have you have uh, Deathstroke, <laughs> Splash Thompson. Yeah, like, it's uh, like dude, no. okay. And yeah. I mean, it's it's it, uh, yeah. I mean, he's definitely he's probably my second favorite Flash behind Chris Zoka, and Flash from the MCU is the worst. <laughs> but but no, I mean Flash is all right in this. But no, just Peter himself. I just. I, I get it. I, I get the way Raimi was going, but it's like, even when he became Spider-Man, it's like he had a little bit more confidence when he had the suit and mask on. But yeah. at the same time, it's like, he didn't really have any, like, there was no real, I, I don't know, he just too many cheesy lines. Like, like later in the movie when Goblin's like, are you in or out? You're the one who's out, Gobby. Out of your mind. And I'm like, oh my god. I mean, but, but, but like, okay, in the movie's defense, I mean, like, remember, again, this is a time where... I know, I, like, I'm saying this in retrospect, not... Yeah, at the time, I mean, it was fun, and it's still fun. I still legitimately, like I said, I still legitimately love watching this movie. It's, 
uh, while I'm, and I'm going to say it right now, while you're going to hear me say critiques while discussing this film, I genuinely love this movie. I, I, I'll make critique it, but I really, really love this film. I love almost everything about it. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I, I think what, I, I think what um, makes the movie for me is, uh, and we'll get to it later, but uh, William Dafoe as the Green Goblin was like, wow. Oh, yes. so good. I think he's the best interpretation of Green Goblin, like, thus far. Well, and that's not saying much this movie had to do. Because he's the only one. <laughs> when technically, this is the second one, which is Dane Dehan as... That wasn't no damn Green Goblin. Yeah. <laughs> but we'll... we'll <laughs> I don't know what that was. We'll get into that later. So... So, okay, so, okay, Peter Park, so Tobey Maguire as Spider-Man, do you like him, or? <laughs> Not really. I mean, <laughs> kind of. I mean, I do, but I don't. It's like, okay, if these three movies were all we ever got, I'd say, yeah, this is a good, cool Spider-Man. But we got better spider man later on. Right. So yeah. it's like, it was good for what we've got, but they've never done a real american live action spider-man yet so it's like raimi took a swing at it kind of like tim burton with uh you know michael keaton as batman he they took the first swing at doing the live action and while it's not my favorite and it never will be i don't i don't hate him as spider-man but i i wouldn't say he's that amazing yeah i think i think the best way to do it to describe this like you know trilogy is that it's a good first attempt but it's not like the the, the, the definitive um, definition of yeah. Like people say, you know how people are like, we everyone has seen it online. You know, like oh, certain actors were born for their roles. You know, Robert Downey Jr. for Tony Stark, stuff like that. Yeah, I no, I, I, Tobey Maguire as Peter Parker Spider Man would never be on a list like that for me. Yeah, yeah, he wouldn't because like he's not like. As much like I don't agree with the Raimi fanboys, like he's not as iconic as they should be, honestly. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, yeah, it's cool and all, but like, like he's like I've met, I, I've watched Raimi fan fanboy videos where they're, where where you say like Tobey Maguire is the only iconic Spider-Man in, in this world. Like, no, no, like no, I'm sorry, I, like no, <laughs> like there are better in there are better iterations but it's not it doesn't diminish the great first try at this it's like it's like it's like okay the movie doesn't suck because things were done better later yeah okay um, it's like michael again back to michael keaton as batman he was great for the time there's been better batmans since then but that does not diminish his attempt at the role yeah, it's, or, or you know, a better comparison is Superman. You know, I th- I think the best Superman is Cavill, in my opinion. The most easily and modern Superman is Cavill, but it doesn't diminish it doesn't diminish Reeves's performance. In exactly, the old Superman it's just different styles and different ways of showing these characters. And this was the interpretation Raimi went with, and I wouldn't say he got it wrong per se, but I also wouldn't agree he was that close to the comic yeah in yeah. some ways he was in other ways he wasn't yeah it's a line but of- same as garfield garfield was different as the role and holland is also different they're all different in the ways they play them and just i don't know toby mcguire just never was and you guys gotta remember i'm older than you santino so it's like i grew up seeing these in theaters yeah it, Toby was never my Spider-Man. I never, like, as soon as they announced The Amazing Spider-Man, I was like, well, that's fine. Like, I wasn't all bent out of shape like a lot of people are right now with Affleck being potentially finished as Batman at some point. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that does make sense. You know, I think, I think the problem that I have with Maguire's Spider-Man is, like, he never really felt like, you know, he felt like he... The problem I have with Maguire's Spider-Man is... And it's uh, it's it's um, present in all three of these movies that his powers and his ro- w- um, his his method of being Spider-Man is all evolved around Mary Jane. <sighs> like, yeah, Mary Jane. Oh, Mary Jane, I love you. Oh, Mary Jane, I want to be with you. It's like, like, yeah, okay, Mary Jane's a big part of 
the story of Spider-Man. But he's not the purpose. It's not the purpose of why he's doing it. Like, I, like and I think... Yeah. I, I think the like... I, I think I... I think that's the reason why I like this movie the most is because, like, okay, in, in this movie, you get the classic, okay, Uncle Ben got killed. So now I'm going to use his powers with, you know, with great power comes great responsibility um, to defeat the bad guys. And that ending shot of Mary Jane um, like saying, I want to be with you, but, like, you know, Peter says, I can't because if my enemies figure out that we're going to be together, then you could be a potential, like, you know, hostage and and, and and very good point and then the next one she's like he's like oh Mary Jane I miss you so much like why oh, you fuck. gave, you gave a damn about. you gave a let's damn let's finish up to... one before we move on to two yeah. <laughs> no I agree that ending of the, the ending of this movie is amazing I think it still stands up as such a classic heroic ending of having to make the choice the girl of his dreams is throwing herself at him and he takes the high ground and is like, I can't because I saw what happened to my aunt and I saw what happened to you and yeah. I can't go through that again. So I was like, props to you, man. You, you are a true hero. You are, you are a legitimate, amazing hero at this point. And yeah, we'll get to two in a little bit, but um, yeah. So speaking of the ending, let's go over, uh, let's go over probably my favorite villain from all three of these films. Goblin. Willem Damn, Dafoe. what a great performance. Willem Dafoe as Green, Green Goblin is like, wow. He's really good. He hams it up so much to the point that it's like, this is absolutely incredible. The performance Dafoe gave in this movie. It's amazing to watch every single scene he's in. Yeah. Like, the fact that, you know, no one says no to me. <laughs> He's really like, like, damn, dude, that's awesome. And like, like all the uh, now who's out and he throws his pumpkin bomb and he kills all his old friends. Even the guy in the wheelchair and just reduces him to a skeleton. <laughs> it's like, oh, dude, I was like that's how you're like it's cheesy, like you know, like where like the bomb like it doesn't like explode. There's no blood and guts. There's like it just turns the people into skeletons. It's like <laughs> that's how you know this is like a classic two thousands. Yeah, as Macy Gray is in the background, another like, yeah. nobody has been. Yeah, um, Macy Gray is there, and like, oh, that, like, man, I remember, I remember when she was a thing. I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> like and Macy Gray was like, <laughs> I was like, I was like three when she was famous. I was like, that, like, I, I rewatched. And then when you were three and a half, she wasn't famous. <laughs> ah, yeah, Goblin is awesome. Just. The, the whole arc they do. I mean, there's a reason this movie was the focus of the parody of superhero movie. Have you seen that, by the way? Yeah. Who am I? I'm Dragonfly. <laughs> uh, dude. No, but like, but like, you got to admit, that movie was awesome, too. In its own way. In its way. <laughs> awesome at being garbage. <laughs> the opening, that opening scene, or like, not, not opening scene, that, that scene at the festival where like Peter has his spider sounds and he looks up and he sees that that, that that small object of like the glider flying. And it turns around and then he starts attacking like, dude, oh my God. I was like, that is like, like that is perfect setup right there. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, like, Goblin is great. And the that very I love that line he gives at the end also. Um as he's holding Mary Jane in one hand and like, you know, the rope oh, that was so the car in the other hand, and he's just like we are who we choose to be, hero. Now, now choose. choose. He just drops them both. And I love that shot Raimi went with. Yeah. The reflection of Spider-Man's eyes. Mary Jane in one eye, the train in the other eye. It's like, yes, that, oh, that I love that. That was so good. That was so good. I was like, that's why I like me. Like, you know, like, it, it's cheesy, but I think there are moments like that where they're like, okay, yeah, it's cheesy as hell, but it works. It's like, like, where Goblin's like, you know, now choose. And then, like, you see, like, the kids screaming and, like, the eye of Spider-Man and Mary Jane other. And, like, he has to pick. And then Spider-Man, you know, he grabs both. And then, you know, even if the logic doesn't make sense, like, I get, even if the logic doesn't make sense, like, like uh, Goblin is strong, but, like, really that strong where he hold up a cable car, like, line with, like, one hand only? Like, you know how... And Spider-Man is struggling. <laughs> yeah, you know how heavy that is? <laughs> How heavy? A couple hundred pounds? Yeah. Like, like, even, 
even the even even like um even, like even the cheesy moments like, uh, um I love where like you know Gaunt's got attacked and like he gets knocked down by like the civilians like you mess with Spidey, you mess with New York. You mess with yeah, one that of them. scene is kind of cringe in retrospect. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, oh, yeah, it's cringe. You mess with one of us, you mess with all of us. Oh shut the fuck up. That is not how New York like, is. I've been there. In, New yeah, York in real is life, scary. I've been to New York. I've been to New York, and in real life, people it's have, fucking scary, isn't it? People would have watched it happen, not like <laughs> the most stuff. You have a, and, and I couldn't blame. I really couldn't blame him because like you have a guy who was like the best like high tech glider ever, and like, you, he can shoot missiles, missiles at you. So I I don't think you. Yeah, I think that people would have just watched instead of like. <laughs> But what happens in the graveyard is awesome, amazing. dude. That graveyard fight is just beyond brutal. And it's like you said, even with the cheesy thing like that, he's about to impale Spider Man with the glider. He jumps and he just goes, Oh, and then boom, gets impaled with his own glider. Oh, that was what brutal. Like when, like, I saw it the first time I saw it when they impaled the glider and he started bleeding from his mouth. Like, ah, oh, it hurts. Dude, and you know what? That's another thing people like, not to go on a knock the MCU tangent, but it's like, at least these movies have balls and they show blood when it should. Yeah, when the goblin talks about that pumpkin bomb, like, Spider-Man's mask gets blown off. Yeah, and you actually see blood all over him. And then when the goblin gets impaled, he's bleeding from the mouth, like you said. Yeah, oh, that's true. That's that, that, that's horrible. Oh, and, that's what you get when you hire a, a horror director for your to start your trilogy. Very uh, smart move. And then, and then, okay, and you get that whole final like shot of you know, Goblin like Spider-Man leading Goblin to rest, and you see Harry, and it's a real quick before we end. You know, Spider-Man one. What do you think of Harry Osborn or you know James Franco as Harry Osborn? You do you like him? No. Or you didn't? <laughs> Me neither. No, he's. <laughs> He's as bad as Mary Jane. They're both yeah. bland. Tr- they're both bland garbage in these films. I'm That's sorry. the problem. I don't like Harry Osborn and Mary Jane in this movie, and we'll talk about it later. But like, Mary Jane is just bad. Like Kirsten Dunst is gorgeous girl, but there is no chemistry between Tobey Maguire and her. Like, there's like there's like stupid stuff, and like and like and I, was it the second one? Second one was like, I hunch. Don't like wow, great. Uh, or, no, I think that was no, I think that was this one. It was right, wasn't that right before she got attacked in the alley and then they did the upside down kiss? No, it was where I, I know it was where and they were in the backyard. That was the first one, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That was earlier. Oh, yeah. you look taller now. I hunch. What the yeah. fuck was that? And before we get on, before we get on, <laughs> before we can get on with. Um, Will in the Fall. I can't believe I almost forgot about this. We're gonna talk about the best character in this entire movie, J.K. Simmons as J. Jonah Jameson. I mean, dude, are, are, are you as like? He I, was born to play that role. Oh yeah, dude. Like Tobey Maguire was not born to play Spider Man. Simmons was born to play Jameson. And you know what? That's another thing. I think a lot of people seem to like. I I know people know this. I'm not stupid. But I've seen a lot of people always pass over that scene where Goblin smashes in and is like about to kill Jameson. And he's like, who takes Spider-Man's pictures? I I don't know. He mails them to us. It's like, damn, dude, he just protected Peter. He treats him like shit, but he just saved his life. Like, Jameson's not an asshole. Yeah, he's not an asshole, but like, like he he says some like asshole things like, you know, like, like (laughs) in the next one where like he, where he, he 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 gets the experiment's costume. He's like, he, he, James Jameson's like, you know, I'll give you a hundred bucks for it. And then the the guy's like, I can get more of that on eBay. <laughs> and, and then Jameson's like, okay, two fifty in a bar of soap. Like, what the hell, dude? <laughs> oh, okay, and speaking of Spider Man too. Uh, oh, we're, we're <laughs> moving on to Spider Man too. I guess we can like weirdest transition ever. But like, uh, unless you have anything to say about Spider Man one. You have anything else to great. say? No, great movie. Yeah, it's a great movie. And it's perfect, like cheesy happiness mixed with like awesome moments. And it's a great origin. It's another it's another one that I would drop into like some of my favorite origin films. 
Yeah, I agree. I agree. So, moving on to Spider-Man 2 and Chad, you have been very vocal about your your uh, less than... Movies. Fucking stupid. There you go. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't care. It's, I, I don't... I do not understand. Okay. I am fine with people loving this film. I have at it. But to still say this is one of the best superhero movies of all time, how? Why? I've never, ever seen anyone give me a valid point why this is still one of the best. I literally did not like this movie when I even saw it in theaters back in 2004. Even then, I was like, I don't, this, this was not a good follow up. Okay, can you elaborate on that, Chad? Because this is a. Oh, uh, I hate Spider Man. I hate, I hate Peter Parker in this film. I hate what they did to his character. I think it's a complete bastardization of the character of Peter Parker. The way he treats Mary Jane in this film, I think, is absolutely disturbing. He literally emotionally fucks with her this entire film. You cannot look at someone and say, I, she's throwing herself at him at the end of Spider-Man 1. Yeah. He says, he nobly says, I can't be with you. He obviously can't go into reasons why he can't be with her, but in his mind, he knows why. And we, the audience, know why also. He walks away. And then in this movie, it's, he's like, Follow, he goes and sees her and he's buying her flowers and then she's hey I'm seeing someone and he gets all like depressed and upset about it and then he's all oh yeah we could still be together maybe someday and it's like dude no, no. no. yeah exactly no fuck <laughs> you you do not this is not what I want to see out of what is supposed to be the results of a pop of a very noble action yeah. And then he's sitting there going, oh, we can, we can't. You're emotionally messing with this girl. This is very weird and very, very, I, 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 I do not like it at all. I think it's just wrong what he does. Yeah, I don't like it either. Like, it, it, it's not like, um, it's not Spider-Man. Well, he, wait, okay. When you tell someone, I can't be with you for valid reasons, and you know they care about you, you need to leave them alone. You need to get away from them. Because the more you go around when you know they care about you, you're just building up false hope and you're being a tease at that point. And that is very emotionally wrong to do to people. Yeah, the, the, the whole, the, what I don't like about this is that Peter goes is very inconsistent with his choice. At the very end of Spider-Man 1, we get the whole thing like, all right, I'm sorry, but we can't be together. I can't explain why, but we can't. Um, and I hope you respect the choice. And then you're just like, okay, I love you, but I, I will respect that choice. And he swings away and you get that like, last shot of like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be the hero, you know, because I have this power. And in the second one, it's like, the very first scene, it's like, she looks like me every day. Mary Jane Watson, like, what the fuck? And it's like, why are you so obsessed with this girl? Dude, no. <laughs> you know what? Sorry, I, I know this is probably going to piss off a lot of people. TASM2 handled Peter and Gwen's breakup far better than this movie handled Peter and Mary Jane not being together. Not just that, dude. I mean, like... It, well, okay, everything about Peter and Gwen was better than Peter and Mary no, Jane. No, like, not just that, but like, even in the MCU movies, like, if we're talking about the concept of choices, like, in the MCU movie, in Far From Home, like, you know, the second, the set, the third second Spider-Man movie, um, <laughs> weird to say, in Far From the Home... The third like, Spider-Man 2. Yeah. <laughs> in Far From Home, Peter says that, um, you know, Happy says, you know, it's time to let Tony Stark go. You know, he's gone. And like, you're not going to be Iron Man. You're never going to be Iron Man. You know, you have to make a choice. Like, who are you going to be? You're going to be like Tony Stark's successor or are going to be yourself? And then, like, I'm going to be myself. I can't let the shadow of Tony Stark anymore get to me. And he makes a choice. And, then, like, it, and it's finished. Like, he, he, he's not anymore out of Tony Stark's shadow. And he's consistent with that choice unless they undo it in three, which really, like, We'll, we'll <laughs> the way things are looking, they probably will. We're like, we'll wait and see, but like, unless they uh, unless they undo it in three. But so far, so good. I mean, like, 
if they're consistent with it, then that's good. But like here, it's like in, in Spider-Man Two, he flip flops with their with his choices. It's like no, dude, like you already said in Spider-Man One that I am gonna be Spider-Man and I have to let go of the people who the girl who loves me to be this person. Then great, noble choice. But then like you flip flop anyway. It's like no, dude, like yeah. It's like, do you, and then still after everything that happens in this, it's like, he's still flip-flopping all over the place. And instead of being like, I, I get it. Like when he's sitting there crying, when she's supposed to be at her own wedding, it's like, I get that you're sad, but it's like show support for her because now you're still just messing with her. In fairness though, also like Mary Jane was also like, um, who would want to be with this Mary Jane, anyways. Mary, Jane, Mary Jane was also like giving him hints and like they're both terrible people like Mary yeah, Jane, because like, she never got over him because he wouldn't let her yeah how is she supposed to get over him if he keeps going around her yeah that I, I, I don't know you you but, can't it's <laughs> I, I, I don't like and I don't like that that implication that Spider-Man lost his powers because Mary Jane wasn't going to fall of him. Like, I'm sorry, no. Okay. I didn't Sp- get that. I genuinely <laughs> didn't understand that. His I'm sorry, confidence no. waned, so he lost his power. What? No, I, I, I'm sorry. No, you know why? Because Spider-Man is more than Mary Jane. Just like how Superman is more than Lois Lane. It's like... <laughs> like if Spider-Man lost his powers because Lois Lane is like, I don't want to be with you anymore. Yeah, imagine oh, Superman fly! Imagine if Superman couldn't do that. Like, 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 like what the fuck? It's like, it's, it's, it's like, yeah. Or if Batman like, suddenly wasn't the world's greatest detective because Catwoman refused to, like, sleep with him or something. Yeah, it's like, yeah, the girls are important. Like, the love interest is important, for sure. Okay, yes, because it's like, it has tension and, you know, you have your different relationships. Like, that's fine. But, you gotta, you gotta know that, like, it's way more than just the relationships that make the whole story. You know what I mean? Like, does that mm-hmm. make sense? <laughs> or is it just bullshit? Yeah. No, it just, it just so goes with what I said. I, I don't, what I started out with, I, I don't get why people say this is still one of the best superhero films ever made. Yeah, me neither. I don't get it. I get liking it. That's perfectly fine. Every movie has its fans, but for some people to be like, you know, objectively, this is one of the best. It's like, no, subjectively, it's you think it's one of the best, and it's one of your favorites. It's, it's, I, it's really not that. It's really not that great. Yeah. I mean, okay, and and anytime the and this is the weirdest part. Anytime people, anytime I, we choose to get into the debates about this, which I rarely do anymore because it's been done to death. Nobody's ever been able to convince me why it's great. They always bring up one scene, and I don't understand why people think action scenes make movies great. They're always like, this movie had that awesome train scene. I'm like, so what? What the hell does that have to do with why a movie's amazing? That's literally like saying, Santino, Bumblebee is the best Transformers movie because of the first five minutes on Cybertron. It's like, no, no, that's not the only reason the movie's good. Or it's like saying Revenge of the Fallen is amazing because it had that forest fight. Right. It's like, yeah, it was cool, but that doesn't make a film. And sorry, I don't care what anyone says. Okay, yeah, sure, the train scene was cool. Yeah, whatever. We're past that. Uh, bullshit. Nobody on that fucking train took a picture with a camera. Bullshit. Nobody said who Spider Man was. Fuck that noise. This is New York City. Somebody was going to go do it to get money or something. Yeah, for sure. (laughs) A bunch of strangers on a train. Somebody was going to, like, be like, go to the cops. I can give you a composite sketch of exactly what this guy looked like. (laughs) Yeah, dude. Or, like I said, take a picture. Are the of New York really that good? Like, that's, like, that's, like, all the issues I have with this, like, movie. Like, this is something... The citizens they of make New York are, City out to be like the yeah. land of milk and honey or some shit. Yeah, it's like, like, New York is a New York has good people in it, but it's also a dangerous fucking city. Like I can't believe honestly that like, Home Alone 2 portrayed New York way better than Spider-Man 2. <laughs> <laughs> it did. Because like in 
No, at least in Home Alone, at least in Home Alone, you have that, that scene of like Kevin walking on the street and all those the, like the homeless people, the prostitutes. Yeah, like 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 staring at him, like what? Like, are you lost, little man? But like in this one, like like you're not telling me, like you're not telling me that one person would have taken like a picture. Exactly. <laughs> and what's more ridiculous is when, is when Otto Octavius comes in and he's like, "Give me, give." He's mine, and like you know, like in general, like you have to get through us. Like really, you'd really stand in front of the guy with like the extra four metal limbs. You really do that? Yeah. <laughs> no. You know what? I'm sorry. It was. This is another one. I'm guarantee I'm gonna get shit for this, and I don't really care. Uh, fucking Power Rangers handled that better. <laughs> people, pr- people standing up to the villains <laughs> to protect the good guys. Oh my, yeah. Uh, speaking of Otto, uh, yeah, he, he was Otto? he was he was fine, I guess. I, I I don't I don't know. He didn't really he didn't really do much for me. He was I mean sure he was cool. He was really strong. Uh, the scene where the 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 arms came to life and murdered all those people was pretty cool. Yeah, it was very awesome. But it's like if they wanted to do the the arms like messing with Otto's mind. Sorry, the PS4 game did a better job of that. Yeah, that's true. And I- I'm aware it's not fair to make a comparison to that game and a movie that came out in 2004, but it's like, the game did a better job of showing the chip messing with him. Because it's like, I could never really tell when Otto was in charge and when the chip was affecting his decisions. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. Like, 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 where is the line? Like, when Otto- like, when was he in charge? When was he going? Like, I shouldn't be doing. I, I, I don't know. When Otto robbed the bank, was that him? Or was that the arms? Was like, <laughs> that's what confused me. Yeah. And obviously not everything has to be comic accurate suits, but I think they could have done a little better than a trench coat. Yeah. And a pair of glasses. Yeah. I mean, Goblin, Sandman, Venom, all decent representations of their comic book counterparts. Goblin probably, I mean, going with the suit, I guess was better than a live action goblinish looking thing which i still kind of wish we'd gotten have you seen that concept art for the mask they wanted him to wear originally mm, for goblin yeah no it mm. looked a lot yeah it looked really looked, looked really close to the comics like I'll, I'll send it to you sometime or i'll put All it right. in the video sure. but yeah i just i don't know i i was not that impressed with Otto. yeah S- sorry i mean sure he redeemed himself in the end and you know killed himself not a problem sure good you know good on him he he redeemed himself and he you know he died for it which from what we've understood they're getting ready to undo yeah i like alfred i i do like alfred molina's um auto octavius but i i wish that he could have done more with the role you know what i mean yeah, they didn't really do much with it. Unfortunately, like I said, there's people who say they did, and that's perfectly fine. I just, I don't see it. Yeah, I understand. Uh, what was that? Um, oh, yeah, his wife was that chick from Star Trek Insurrection that we liked. Oh, right, yeah. The way she died was visually interesting, I'd say, with the glass flying towards her. Yeah. I don't, I, I mean, unless that shit was like flying at her at like the speed of a bullet, I don't know if that would, or if it did hit her like right in the throat, I don't know if that would just automatically murder her, but yeah, whatever. And, well, in fairness, the comic book mo- MacGuffin is pretty cheesy too. It's like, it's like you have, uh, what? Like a sun <laughs> you can create? <laughs> oh, God. It's weird. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, you have a the son. comedy. Yeah, this, let's see. The comedy in this movie doesn't really do it for me. Like that scene in the elevator, I really don't think it's that funny. <sighs> you know what scene I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. the suit. Oh, it kind of rides up. It's like, oh, 
Okay. <laughs> the, the problem, the problem I have with Spider-Man doing the first place is that it, it, it just feels like it feels like what I said before. It's like uh, you know what? Okay, here, great comparison. Spider-Man Two feels like Arrow season four onwards, where it became. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I'm, I'm really Total sorry. Total garbage. Here. You went there. Because Arrow season four onwards became the Oliver X Felicity show more than it became a Green Arrow show. That's what really became, that, that, that's what I really got from the feeling of Spider-Man 2, where it was really more of, oh, it's the Peter and Mary Jane show more than it is the Spider-Man show. That's what I got from it. Yeah, and, yeah, and, 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 and Harry probably, didn't really do anything in this movie, did he? Yeah, he just stood there and be like, um, aside from unmasking Peter, he never really like, yeah, just I hate Spider Man. That was Harry's character in this movie. Yeah. Uh yeah, I don't I don't know. I don't really have much left to say about it. Uh me neither. I, I don't know. I mean, like I said, I know I'm gonna make people mad and I'm sorry, but it's like I I don't get it. I mean, people like fight for the, you know, it's so deep and spider and yeah. okay, sure, that scene where Aunt May is like, you know, the little kid wants a hero yeah, that, okay, that was and you could tell cool. that she already knew he was Spider-Man. And it's like, yeah, that scene was pretty cool. But it's like small scenes like that sprinkled throughout the film. They're not enough to make up for the bigger problems with it. Yeah, okay, that was actually good. I actually like that scene. I actually yeah, did. I did too. It was good. Like, I believe there's a hero in all of us that makes us strong. You know, and all that. Yeah, good. it was good. It's just, like I said, it's it's not enough to stay save the rest of the problems. And I mean... Yeah, even the fucking ending. Mary Jane runs out on her own wedding, and that's yeah, poor, and poor I'm gonna be with you, Peter. And then you know, oh, I realize I love you. I'm gonna be with you. It's my choice. Awesome. That's very noble of you, Mary Jane. You know what? Very cool. I actually did like that part. That was a, I, yeah. I, that was probably the strongest, smartest thing this stupid character has done in all three movies. And then as soon as you hear police sirens, Peter's like, well, gotta go. This is what you signed up for. And then she's standing there in his shithole apartment in her wet, probably expensive as hell wedding dress, looking out as Peter swings and she already has a look of regret on her face. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, wait, you, you knew what you were getting into though. <laughs> Why do you already look angry? <laughs> It's, it's more of like a look of worry, like, uh, man, like, he's gonna fight. Me. No, it wasn't a look of worry. It was a look of annoyance. It was a look of, oh, God, what have I done? It's like, just go back to the church. Yeah. Get married to the astronaut and be rich. Poor astronaut, though. Like, that guy got, like, out of it. Imagine being stood up by, I'm, I hate, this is gonna sound really bad. Imagine being stood up by, like, a girl like Mary Jane, who, like, came from like sorry she came from trash and like you're offering her the world and she spit in your face and stood you up at your own wedding yeah what a bitch <laughs> yeah Mary Jane's oh. not anyone who says that Mary Jane's a great character in these movies I'm sorry Fuck no she's not watch the movie again <laughs> please she is not a great character She's better in three than one and two. Oh, yeah, she is. So, uh, anything left for two, or are you finished with it? Yeah, I'm finished too, man. Now comes probably the biggest shock. Ah, uh, I actually like Spider Man 3. <laughs> I actually enjoy it too. Even though it has, it's it's it has fun, problems. it's got loads of flaws. It's got so many flaws, it's not even funny, but. You know what? Overall, I don't understand the like hatred this one gets. Me too. I mean, like, yeah, it's it, 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 it it's like half good, half bad. But overall, it's not as bad as well. It's not as bad as uh, most people make it out. X Men Three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not as bad as that. Yeah, Spider-Man 3 is, okay, so I know it's a retcon, and people always seem to just, like, hover on it, and they're like, everything was so many shit, because they retconned it. Okay, well, if you can look past the fact that it's just a retcon, 
to something we didn't see anyways. This is not like how they revealed Han coming back to life in Fast and Furious yeah, 9. Not like that, yeah. This is not the same type of retcon. We did not see what happened outside the wrestling match. So is it stupid? Yeah, but visually we never saw it. So you know what? Whatever. I've seen people make bigger excuses for other for plenty of MCU films. And you know, uh, time travel doesn't make sense. Just get over it. Okay, well, they retconned something from the first movie in this one that we never saw anyways. Just get over it there. But I genuinely think Sandman is awesome. Yeah. Like, I, I, was I love his that. character. I was about to say that. Like, Sandman is the only competent villain in, this, in, in a villain with three... In a movie with three villains, Sandman's the only competent guy. Oh, easily. And, <laughs> like, that scene where he became Sandman is oh, was still so awesome good. to watch. That was so good. And, 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 and you know what? Uh, like, that scene of him trying to grab his daughter's locket is so heartbreaking. Because that's all that matters to him at his, in his existence at that point. Yeah. I, I, um... I genuinely um, like Sandman in this movie. He's the, and, and you know what was weird? When I was a kid, when I was like six years old, I thought New Goblin was the coolest one. And the best. <laughs> that but goofy after, face like, shield thing? But after, after, all, after watching it, like, yeah, New Goblin was like the shittiest one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's worse than Venom. <laughs> Uh, he's just pointless he's he was literally that. in this movie so they could have two on two at the end that's the only reason he was in this movie Disney goblin has like one scene and of fighting spider-man and i thought he gets amnesia and he gets that was the dumbest scene ever they're fighting and he falls down in a fall that should have killed him he just got amnesia yeah it's like a live action warner brothers cartoon <laughs> It should have, seriously, his fall should have killed him. And instead, no, he just, Peter, I don't remember who I am. I hey, just buddy. remember you're my best friend. I'm like, oh my God. Hey, buddy, I hit my head. My father, he died, right? Like, oh my God, dude. So where's the line of when his memory was gone and what? And like, he doesn't remember that he hates Spider-Man, but he remembers that his father's dead. Yeah. That's not how I, I don't I don't think that's how amnesia works. I don't think it's selective memories that get erased. Yep. Uh, weird weird concept. Let's see. Uh Mary Jane is once again pretty fucking shit in this film. Uh that scene where she's like a complete failure and gets told she's a fucking failure. <laughs> And then Peter's like, the city loves me. And she's like, it's not about you. It's about me. Oh my God. Like, I'm like, you guys are the worst couple I've ever seen in my life. That's why I don't, that's why when people say, it, oh, the Peter, Peter and Mary Jane are better in the Ray movies than they were in MCU. No, they're not. Oh, I'm sorry. She is, just, she is just a selfish bitch in all of these movies. I can't stand her interpretation of this character. Wow, she said go get him, Tiger, a few times. Yeah, that, uh, and she has red hair. Yeah, that automatically makes her Mary Jane. Oh. <laughs> Man, this is stressful to talk about. It's stupid. She's not a good love interest. I don't care what anyone says. She's not. And honestly, and like that, Jane Peter, like, he obviously looks at her and she, like, looks like she's, like, depressed she's like full-on crying and he's like everyone loves me it's like hey jackass look at your girl that you claim to love she like looks depressed as hell get over yourself for five seconds and see what's wrong with her yeah yeah i didn't like it also and honestly gwen gwen stacy in this movie was way hotter than mary jane <laughs> I, and i just i think it's hilarious Bryce Dallas Howard is naturally a redhead and Kirsten Dunst is naturally a blonde. And they like swapped. Oh my god, that's hilarious. That is hilarious. Bryce Dallas Howard did look good in this, but she looked better she in Jurassic did. World. She did. The first Jurassic World. Not the second. No. <laughs> There's nothing good about that film. Uh, uh, let's see. What else with this? Uh, I think everything with Eddie was actually good. Yeah, I think ev everything... I, I think not I, Venom, I, Eddie. I think I, I think um, 
I got my own thoughts think, on Venom, but go I ahead think, with Eddie. I think everything with the black suit is pretty good before it becomes Venom. Like when yes. Peter becomes like, you know, you know, what, what everyone calls right now, Bully Maguire. Yeah. I think everything then is good. Like, like you know, where, where he becomes like this asshole and he starts like... He, well, like, he becomes an asshole the way a dork would try to be yeah an as cheesy as it is you know him dancing and being like oh yeah you know look at me i'm, I'm sexy now I'm like, <laughs> like you know what that's like everyone is always like that scene is so cringe and it's like it's but that's guys that's he's a that. dork that's how that's yeah. how a fucking loser like him thinks he's cool yeah that's how he would act it's not like it's out of character he's, he's not like a badass who like is going through like a midlife crisis who like goes out and like goes to the gym and gets jacked and like buys a motorcycle or something like yeah. this is the way a loser with like no money thinks he's a badass yep i agree i i just i i don't i i don't think the stuff with eddie was that bad either like yeah, it wasn't like it, it was interesting i thought the dyma- dynamic they had was kind of interesting i mean i wouldn't say it was great but it was fine i guess i liked it better than most of his interactions with harry in the second movie in the first movie it was fine sometimes i guess but i wouldn't say it was great but it was interesting at least yeah uh the black suit i thought looked pretty cool i thought the really cool yeah the fight against sandman down in the subway was pretty badass turns him into mud man and just kind of becomes a total dick and i oh, yeah. actually kind of liked him being a dick I, like I, I, it, think, I think the whole interaction like what makes this movie me is the whole interaction between peter parker and sandman you know all the whole story of like oh it was sandman who actually killed your uncle but and then like and like you so know peter has this grudge and like he's he's choosing revenge and hate and all that and i do like i honestly do like I, I, you know before the final battle it's at me who's like you know um, who talks to him and like, hey, you know, I was also angry too when your uncle died and I had to live with it myself and you have to live with it too. Like, that's actually, you know, this movie has heart. I, I like that, you know, I like that. There's like... And as messed up as it sounds, ooh, probably one of my favorite, like, scenes is the one where he takes Gwen on the date. Um, she realizes he's just using her to get back at Mary Jane. She tells him to piss off and, le- and leaves. Good on her. Yeah. And then, uh, I love it. They get into the fight. He accidentally slaps Mary Jane to the ground. And it's like, that scene on top of the bell tower is yeah, incredible. So good. Where he's ripping the black suit off of himself. That was so, I love that. Because it was like, it was a physical and emotional and mental purge of the black suit. He's like, this thing is so bad for me. It has to go now. Yeah, it was so good. That whole when the bite, when the bells are like hitting, and you can and you see Venom's face like jump off him for the first time. That is for a really brief second. Like, oh, that's awesome. Or the symbiote's face, I should say. Yeah, yeah. I think this one would have benefited more if, if like, if like the black suit landed on Eddie, and then like, it just cuts away, and then like you have the final battle with Sandman, and then in the after credit scene. Eddie becomes Venom, and you have that first Spider-Man four. See, but the problem with that is Sandman didn't want to battle Spider-Man. Yeah, it's true, though. It's true. It's like, it need Venom was the catalyst that pushed Sandman to, like, do what he did at the construction site battle, which is, like, my second favorite fight out of the final uh, three battles. Yeah, that was awesome. Because battle. you know what? That one was just all spectacle i mean that was like the final battle in like godzilla king of the monsters it was just like pure chaos yeah and again but you know what people in new york be way like up like <laughs> it's like like no dude if the people in new york actually they would run not actually stay. oh they'd be terrified <laughs> <laughs> uh so did you have much to say i i, I kind of want to talk about the end a little bit did you have anything I else do, I do actually- prior in the film I do actually want to talk about the end. I like the choice that Peter makes. Before we get to the end, did you have anything earlier in the film you wanted to go over or not really anymore? Not really. I mean, like... Okay. Nothing at all. I, I, I do like... I do like the end choice that Peter makes where, like, you know, Simon tells the full story. Like, my daughter was dying. I needed money. Um, I saw my partner running away with the cash. 
your uncle told me to just, you know, give up the gun and go home to her and, you know, don't choose his, choose his life. My partner pushed me. The gun was in my hand. went off in my hands. Yeah. And, and, you know and, what? I'm, you know what, dude? I'm being dead serious when I tell you this. I don't think I've ever told you this. But that scene actually can get me to cry. Yeah. Because it's just, it's, and with hearing the story and Flint being like, I never wanted to be this. All I care about is my daughter. And Peter's like, I've made mistakes too. I forgive yeah. you. Yeah. And then was- Sandman just breaks down and floats off. It's like, that scene literally can get me to like, that was so tear awesome. up. It's like I, I like what Simon says before. He says that I'm not asking you to forgive me. I'm just asking you to understand. And then Peter's like, with the talk from Aunt May before the fight, he's like, I I forgive you. I forgive you. Like like like, like he let go of his anger, and that was like the final like let go of the black suit. Like he's done. Like yep. Like and it showed that he attacked Sandman in a rage, and it was a stalemate. He approached him with forgiveness, and they both were at peace. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And, and, and Simon went off to, like, you know, like, I, I, I like, do whatever I like, Sandman does. Yeah, like, like I, 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 I like where he went off. Like, well, he's, he's done, you know, and I like it. You know, it's like, yeah, I like, and I like that they didn't kill him. Yeah, I like that they didn't kill him either. I, I like that they didn't kill him. Like, he just, so, just he just yeah. off. And I was like, you know, that, 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 that's the end of him, I guess. I mean, like, he, he he's, gonna go off somewhere else so know? jump into jumping to venom real quick uh i don't like how I, I don't like the design i don't like that they kept pulling back his fucking face and showing topher grace i don't care about topher grace yeah hey I didn't parker keep seeing him my spidey sense thing like, if you know what i'm talking about like oh dude like like no like, like no like like I, I, <laughs> I never supported i never supported uh the three villains in this movie like, if you want to have Venom as the crazy antagonist, then just make Venom. And then you can have Sandman. But this movie did not need you, Goblin. No. Well, like, like I said, he was just there to be on Peter's team for the final fight, so it was two on two. You know, Harry, I will give it, that scene was awesome when Harry came in and saved him. Like, Peter's reaching for Mary Jane. She's reaching for him. Sandman pounds down on him, and he just drops, and you know he's got one hit left. You know, Harry comes in and saves him, and suddenly he's fine. He was knocking on death's door, and he's fine without being hit for 30 seconds. Well, like, if that's the case, then you can have Harry just be a good guy. Why does Harry have to be a bad guy? You know, it's like... I just manufactured... Oh, that was another thing we forgot to talk about. That manufactured garbage drama earlier in the movie where they break up, and she's kind of with Harry, oh. and Harry makes her break up with him, and... Oh, that was horrible. That was horrible. It's like, it's like stop putting romantic chemistry where there is none. And That was bad. That was really bad. You know, the thing with Harry is he could have been fixed, in my opinion. Like, just have him be a good guy throughout the entire I, time. Like, if I, I, I think it was too late. I, they didn't do enough with him in one and two. I think it was too late for him in this one. I, mean, I think they did the most with him in this one, but that doesn't mean it was good. Like, if the whole thing, if this whole theme of this movie is about forgiveness, you know, forgiveness forgiving yourself, you know, like it's what Adam said, like, you know, you start with doing the hardest thing, you forgive yourself, you know? And it's like, um, if this whole thing's about forgiveness, and how about Harry just like, have ha- how about the side story of Harry be this whole forgiving arc of like, of like, you know, I, I, I'm letting go of all, all of this and I, I, I don't want any more of this. And he saved, he puts on a new goblin outfit for that final fight. And there's no need for like, an, for like a first fight at the beginning, like twenty minutes in, like of this new goblin attack. Like why? Oh God, and the ring falling down and Peter trying to catch it. Yeah, I was like uh, I'm not gonna lie. I always laughed at the pathetic attempt when he went to like propose to her when she was breaking up with him because Harry told her to, and he's like, "I got a ring, I can't," and she just runs off. I'm yeah. Like ah. And 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 honestly, like um it. it even though I didn't like him as much as a character, I did feel a bit for Harry's death. I'd like, yeah. So hold up before we get to that, because I wanted to save that for the, like the last thing we talked about. Yeah. But the battle with Venom, I thought was visually kind of cool when like post Harry getting impaled, like, and I love that too. Harry sacrificing himself so Peter would live. But I did like that fight when Peter was able to separate Eddie from the symbiote 
Peter's like, I'm destroying it once and for all, and Eddie killed himself, basically. Yeah. But then, like, that, yeah, jumping to what you just said about Harry's death. Uh, not gonna lie, that's another scene that actually gets me to cry when Peter and Mary Jane are saying goodbye to Harry and he dies in his arms, basically. I mean, that's, sorry. I mean, I don't feel that much for their friendship because I just didn't really see it that much. But it's like, uh, it was still yeah. sad. Yeah, like, and I, I, I like the final speech of Kit, um, that Peter gives, like, you know, we always have a choice and we can always choose to do what is right. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, my friend Harry taught me that. It's like, yeah, I, I, like, like, that would have been way more emotional if Harry actually had, like, a character arc throughout these three movies instead of just being like, I hate Spider-Man. <laughs> exactly. Like, <laughs> like, if you had Spider-Man 2, like, you know, like, I think I, I, the way I would have done it is if you have Spider-Man 2, have Harry unmask Spider-Man, Peter, like, okay, that's fine. We can do that. And in Spider-Man 3, have Harry have to go through this whole conflict within himself and then have the final battle be him and Peter and then, like, you know, and seeing what, what he's gone through and being like, you know what? Yes. Good on you, Harry. And then when he dies, it make it sad, like, fine. But, like, no. He spent the whole three movies hating Spider-Man, so when he dies, like, it's not as sad as it should be. Yeah, I mean, it still hits me emotionally, but that's just me. Yeah. So, so and, I mean, it ended, uh, I know they were saying they were like, oh, yeah, there's gonna be a Spider-Man 4, but I'm kind of like, the movie kind of ended. I mean, I, I thought it was done. Yeah. Like, I never really expected a fourth movie. I kind of was just like, oh, these two people with no chemistry with each other are back together again. Joy. Like, like I really care. Yeah. Like, I almost... I'm sure there's people who are going to hate that I'm going to say this. I almost wish the movie would have ended with, like, them realizing we're just not going to work. <laughs> like, yeah. she's at the restaurant, he walks by, and they just kind of, like, nod at each other, and he just, like, walks off, and he's like, through all the ups and downs in my life, the losses, the victories, I, I am Spider-Man still or something like that. I, I don't know. I'll better I'm, I'll get a good writer for that. But it's like, I almost wish they would have just done that instead of that slow dance of them. Like It's like, no, you two are not good together. Sorry, you're both... No, sorry, they're not. <laughs> so, do you think there's anybody even still listening anymore, Santino? <laughs> yeah, I think it's nice to let them hear. Like, I mean, like, the point is we defended our reasons on why we don't like this film, which I think is over, or is already okay. I mean, like, it's just our opinion. At the end of the day, it's our opinion. If you like these movies, like, to, to death, then that's, that's fine. We all, have our, we, have, we all have our own opinions, you know? Yeah, exactly. If you would love them, good. I'm happy that these films make you happy. They yeah. just don't. They just don't work the same for everyone. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, um, this has been fun. Really great and interesting discussion and all these stuff. So, uh, next week, we'll be talking a very underrated movie. And, and a lot of people pan this movie, but in, in, our, in both our opinion, I think it's honestly not only that should not be hated, it actually should be revered as one of the best interpretations of Spider-Man. So next mm -hmm. week, The Amazing Spider-Man and The Amazing Spider-Man 2. So I'm Santino and Chad. Our, our, Adios. Are you signing off? All right, good. Bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs>